Hello everyone, continuing off of my last lecture, you might remember that I was going to go over two games and I only had time for one, and for reasons completely unbeknownst to me, I decided it would be a really great idea to volunteer doing that second game on an actual board. Obviously, I wasn't frustrated enough the last time I did a game on a board, and decided that I really needed more of that. So awesome! Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, this game, like the last lecture, was, is a uh, ghoulie game. Uh, for those of you who have not seen it, did not attend, haven't watched it, whatever, um, the lecture was a bit influence-oriented. Uh, uh, one of the dangers, essentially, of developing an influence style is what I'm going over. So you can expect to see a lot of influence play in this particular game. Uh, as standard, I am not going over anything weird and unusual. We have very, very normal openings out of everyone. Ghoulie in this game is, uh, white, it looks like. And those of you who actually have seen all of my lectures, you may actually recognize the game that I'll be going over. Now, as for black, I don't know who that is right now. I'll have a link to the game uh, later up on YouTube. I want to say it's a Japanese player, but I can't read the name from right here. So, happy days. Oops, let's click over there. There we go. So, right off the bat, we have a very interesting opening. We've got 3-4 points from our black player, we've got obvious 4-4 four, four points from our white player. So if anyone is going to develop influence right now, we kind of maybe suspect it might be white and not black. Black decides to go ahead and approach the 4-4 four, four stone, as opposed to doing something more, let's say, territorially inclined, such as an enclosure for a more orthodox opening. White backs off, and right away we can begin to understand how this might develop into an influential uh, kind of game. Because black now has the opportunity to go ahead and establish either the uh, mini Chinese or the uh, micro Chinese Fuseki. And he in fact goes with the latter. Now, the differences between these two wonderful little stones here can essentially make up its own lecture. And in fact, I might actually have a few lectures on each of the openings, so I'm not really going to go over them again right now. Uh, suffice it to say, no matter when you have either a uh, Chinese opening, or even if you have a regular low Chinese opening, uh, you're essentially looking at a, sort of a similar idea. We want our opponent to come back into this 3-4 point. You want them, we want him to approach because we're tightly pincered and it'll be our move. So if we can like picture a stone back there, which is pretty easy to do since I just placed it, we can figure that it's fairly easy to go about and threaten to surround the stone, the approach is low, we can easily oops, knock the stones all over the place, we can easily kick it, and uh, because of our pincer stone, there's not even enough room to get a base here. So white clearly has to come up with something else, something better. Uh, what is that going to be? Well, fairly normal would be to split the right-hand side. That would be very, very, very normal. Reason being is simple. We look at this board, and we ask ourselves, what is black trying to do? Black is clearly trying to make some sort of a framework here to try to force us to approach that stone. So it stands to reason that maybe approaching the 3-4 point, maybe even just uh, splitting the right-hand side, breaking up this framework could be a good idea. 
White, on the other hand, decides to poke at this really, really large extension that we have going here. Now that is odd. That is odd. You might ask yourself a question. What question should you be asking yourself right now? should be easy if you're listening to what I just said. Because what isn't white doing right now? White is not breaking up the right-hand side. So if he's not breaking up the right-hand side, does that not leave it up to black if he so chooses to take the right-hand side for himself? Indeed he does. As we see in the actual game. So right now we're seeing a very, very unusual game. Well, I think it's unusual. I don't usually see uh, development in this fashion. We've got a uh, micro Chinese Fuseki going into a variation of a high Chinese. That's kind of weird. But we do have this singular idea that we're getting a framework here. Question now is what is white going to do with all of this? Because he has to have some kind of idea as to how he's going to handle that. Right? We wouldn't have played here if we weren't, um, if we did not know that we're allowing our opponent to continue growing this side of the board. So obviously we played this in full understanding another move is going to be played over here. And now we're going to do something about it. So what in the frack are we going to do about it? It's the question that, uh, comes up immediately. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Immediately, uh, my idea is to panic and think that this move was a mistake. That would be, that would be my idea. That's, that's the page I'm on. I'd be looking at this and I'd be having flashbacks of all of those times where I used to have, you know, uh, when I played for influence and oh my god just like snowball out of control and just stomp my opponent and I don't want that to happen to me oh no 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 I do not want that to happen to me at all so I want to destroy this immediately I on the other hand I'm not a pro white strengthens his corner and continues to hurt uh, wonderful, I don't have coordinates. That's great. That's great. And it continues to hurt this stone, the approaching stone. Now, I would be uncomfortable with this idea. I would be horrifyingly uncomfortable with this idea. I could not adequately explain to you how uncomfortable I would be with this idea. Because what am I doing now? Am I just like letting my opponent continue to grow his framework? while I'm investing in the corner? That seems weird. That immediately seems weird. However, we have to think to ourselves, this area is now pretty strong for white. So if white wants to later on approach here, this stone is actually finding itself in a little bit of a trouble, right? Because this position is now pretty good. So this stone does not want to be sandwiched in between a uh, stone here that might get stronger and the group that's already strong. So that, that could be something to watch out for. The stone might be in a little bit of trouble. So there is that for white. There is that uh, upside. Another upside is this stone is clearly fourth line, so we have really, really cool options that we can do. We can threaten to go under it for invasions on either side. We can still approach. We can do a lot of different things here. Uh, one of the reasons why we actually see uh, the low Chinese over the uh, high Chinese, for example, is it makes it a little bit easier to go back here and just slide into life. So, Black's turn. He decides to approach, as we figured he would, either approach or continue expanding. He chose to approach. And now surely this is where white's going to draw the line in the sand, right? I mean, surely white's going to be like, pow, I'm going to start fighting this thing that you're building, right? I mean, no one, no one would just like sit back and let all this continue to grow. Well, 
not entirely. He decides to sit back and let it continue to grow. Why? Because he's not bad at this game like I am. And he has no fear of the framework building up. This is just something to reduce. It's almost like a go problem. It's like, well, where's the reduction moves now? Which side is larger to approach? This? There? I mean, are we still getting points in territory? Yeah, we are. Weak. So, there's no reason to start hyperventilating over what we're seeing. I would, of course. I'd start hyperventilating, but, you know, there's really no reason to. There's... We don't know where Black's getting his territory from right now. Right now, all of this is just potential. So, it's just a matter of how well can we reduce influence. So, now what do we do? Well, we have to decide where the right invasion point is. And there are a few. I'm just going to go and... Uh, I don't have a marking tool, obviously, because I'm on a real board. So I'm just going to mark here with stones. We've got a whole bunch of different places where we can potentially play. Um... See, any, one, any other really, really common uh, invasion points? I'm going to go with those. So any one of these are pretty much uh, common invasion points. So we have to figure out which one of these uh, four stones is actually the largest point to attack. Now, this says that we're interested in attacking this particular stone. But how important is it to reduce this area? With this area being strong, we know that black is never really going to enlarge this area. So essentially we're just trying to fight over what he can get over here. That's, that, that might be worth it, that might be worth it. What about over here? This says, I want to put pressure on uh, your approaching stone. But that gives black options such as, uh, let's just say attachments. And potentially keeping influence to uh, build up the right hand side. We might not want to do that. This says, I want you to either enclose, or I want you to play down, so I can either slide in here, or separate these two stones. This is a bit less common of a uh, invasion point. It's one where you're happy with either getting this result for an attack, or this result uh, for reduction on the uh, corner. And lastly, move number four. This says that we are going to fight this framework head on and see where that takes us. Oh, right, and people in chat are immediately informing me I need to stop giving directions because it's all backwards. This is my right, it is in fact your left. I need to stop giving directions. Similarly, that, believe it or not, is the top of the board. Yeah, imagine that one. Alright, I'll, I'll try and curb that, sorry. So those are our four options. White chooses the most aggressive method. He looks at the framework, sees that this is the largest area of the framework where essentially it's all being developed from because we've already got a strong position on, on this side of the board. So he dives right in. And now here some people might get a little bit lost if they don't uh, study a lot of Go. You might immediately think to yourself, obvious move. Pull back, Play a Jaseki here. And either whichever one you want to do. Maybe even this one if you just want to settle immediately. Uh, 
and do something a bit like that. Either way, we're seeing from this that it's not really all that difficult for white to settle. I mean, you can pull off a uh, pretty easy group with very limited difficulty. And that's expected. That is completely expected. Now, there are variations here. I'm not going to go over all the complicated ones, or any other ones for that matter. But I wanted to show that it is pretty easy to settle back here, uh, despite being surrounded. Uh, what black gets from that, though, is he gets to develop this area, start turning this into territory. He gets to develop this and make it a little bit stronger, not quite territory, but real, real close. Instead, black decides to go with a diagonal. Now, if we were in fact studying this by ourselves, and we were completely used to this move, and suddenly, out of nowhere, we see something that we just completely flat out don't understand. Like, why the diagonal? What What is that doing? I mean, if you're going to play this, why not play here? All right. Uh, I would go over both variations. Like, what do you expect white to do? Is he going to drop down? Because if he does, we have our answer. I mean, this is the same thing as if white came in low. We kicked him. He extended. And now we're moving to surround. Because he can't really get a uh, good base here, right? There's obviously going to be no life in here. So clearly we don't want to do that. And now we're seeing the purpose of it. If black responds, or white responds by dropping down right now, he's in a lot of trouble. So he has to come up with a better move. So instead, white will uh, play a nice little diagonal move. Oh, shoot. Dang it, phone. Ugh, that so figures. Ah, oh, where was I? Ah, right, diagonal. Have to come up with a better move. So he plays a diagonal. Why? Because we know if we play this immediately, we're really, 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 really screwed. So we don't do that. And I'm off the board. There we go. So now it's a question of what is black going to do? Is black immediately going to respond? by just extending? Could, but now we're kind of letting white dictate where we're going. And steady pincers to keep pressure on this group, because the last thing that we want to do is let it get life uh, too easily. That's why we didn't play... Oops, there we go. That's why we didn't go back and play uh, this variation, right? We're trying to keep pressure on the white's one stone. So black attacks. White now has to decide how is he going to respond. Do we again play down? We could. And this is actually a somewhat common variation. Only trouble is we can see that white still not really certain. Uh, well, actually, it is, it is pretty stable, and I'm actually going to recommend this to most people who 
uh, get in this situation. This is actually a really, really nice way to uh, stabilize your position. And you still also have nice little invasion points to attack this if uh, Black doesn't do something about his group to make it stronger. And even if he does, we're still undercutting him, right? So we can still peck at that. So I would recommend that to most people. Uh, instead, white isn't most people. White is kind of Gu Li, and Gu Li is kind of one of the strongest players in China. So he comes up with something different. He says, I'm going to go under your stone right now. If you don't defend that. Okay. So clearly, what is he doing? Well, this can no longer connect up, right? White's there first. And my throat is going to die. Sorry about that. So clearly, you can see what he's doing there. So this could get de uh, defended, but then we can also drop down, and this corner is completely enclosed. So white sa or black says, no, you're not allowed to do that. You can't completely enclose me. I'm not having it. Not today. So white says, okay, then I'm going to go under your stone. Black says, that's fine, I can attack you. We've got a small knight here. Well spotted. White has a choice. He could back off, but then he has no shape. And then white or then black can just respond. And then we find ourselves really, really close to wanting to resign this game. Because this isn't going well in any way, shape, or form. So how about not doing that? Instead, in true ghouly style, he decides not to play a black stone. That'd be funny. He decides to Hane, create cut points, see what's going to go on here. Well, we have our choice. We can Atari under, or, or, okay, that was the reverse, but whatever. We can Atari in either direction. If we Atari this way, we're letting him under. We've also got cut points here still. If we do this, we're kind of looking to separate, which is what uh, black actually does. Now we have to be careful. If we get too greedy here, we are still going to get cut because our stone is no longer is nowhere near dead. We strengthen our stone. Black comes out, white decides to connect, he realizes the importance of connection. Why connect? Well, if we extend here, which we could do, and let's say we extend here as well, which we could do, and then I guess we're just going to get cut off. If we live by the Proverbs, Hanet out of two and three stones, got to watch out for that, so we prevented that from happening. In exchange, we get cut off, and it looks like it's going to be in Sente as well, because this stone needs to have this stone needs to be killed by White immediately. Otherwise, this is just going to come back to life, and it's not going to be good. So he gets nice wall, and to cut us off in Sente, that that White ain't that White is not happy with that at all. So instead, we're going to connect. Black plays the Atari, so you get more influence out of the deal, but we're in a stronger position. We're settling. Unfortunately, as previously mentioned, he is getting influence out of the deal. And that's kind of important. Kind of important, just a little bit. Black ignores, strengthens himself because he's interested in developing the area over here. Easy to see. But now it's the question again. I mean, we're fine here on the side. White doesn't have to do anything. So what do we do now? What do we do now? Very important question. What are we going to do now? Well, in order to find that out, we have to go through the whole normal routine. 
where are the weak groups? Are there any weak groups? This group, not really all that weak. We just ensured that it is uh, pretty strong now. We're not even completely surrounded yet. Got a happy little stone killed. Can even make some eyes. Our corner's pretty strong. We ensured that. Nothing wrong with the lower left-hand corner. Our 3-3 is not really all that vulnerable until black jumps up. Then we might want to protect it. Till then, don't really care. This stone's interesting, but black stone's a little bit weaker than uh, white, so not terribly interested in that either. So then where are the large points? Well, let's look at the large points. I guess that's kind of large for white, but that seems to be the only, like, build up kind of move that we have. So the rest of them are reductions, right? We can either build up or we can start invading to reduce and we can answer phones again. All right, hurrah. I think hopefully that'll be the last interruption. Sorry about that again. I may cut that out of the video. I do not know. Anyway, where was I? Right, invasion. So we know that the large point is over there. We can start invading. Um, this is the obvious spot to try to reduce anything on this side, on the edge of the board over here, trying to avoid using directions. But where would we play if we wanted to reduce this area because we can kind of picture right that if we're not careful this might turn into a fourth of the board going to black and we don't really want that to happen and it can very very easily i mean we can picture for example even something like this just to get rid of the move or even a cap to see if we can either pull it out or enlarge so that that's that's troubling. That's troubling. We don't want that to happen. We don't want that to happen at all. So what are we going to do? Well, if we're interested in reducing, obvious move right here, is to just jump in. But this is pretty strong, and this is an extremely tight pincer. So, hard to under, hard to really see how, uh, how that's really gonna go. Because we can't run anywhere, right? I mean, we've got a huge black wall facing us. We don't, we don't really want to do that. So, we can kind of go on the edge. And this, we find sector lines again. So instead, White just caps a low stone. Easy peasy. Black has an uncomfortable position now because he knows this isn't enough. He can't just settle for making this uh, territory and, you know, potentially allowing white to just keep coming in or doing whatever he wants to do. Maybe even trying to enlarge his own area. And there's something on that stone. So that's not going to work. So instead, what is he going to do? If we can't just defend, and we have to attack. 
try and swallow up uh, white stone because now as you can see it's behind enemy lines again unfortunately it's also pretty pretty weak I mean this is a very very large area or a large hole rather so white responds black plays nice and strong white responds yet again Black's happy to respond because he's swallowing an area. Did white not get the memo? I mean, what the frack is white doing? This is a reduction move. So what the crap are we doing here? Does that make any sense whatsoever? White turns. Obviously, black defends. White extends. High at the head of three stones. Pretty large again. So we know that what that black is going to respond yet again. And at this point, we get OCD and start messing with our stones. Uh, but yes, black is kind of developing his area. But white's developing an area too question is, who's going to get a larger area? White says, this area is not yours yet. I have a stone in your uh, moyo. Prove that this is your territory. Black keeps the stone separated, force them to live individually. Now here's a fun fact, if this actually lives, then black's last few moves are going to look really, really embarrassing. So the question is, can we kill that? Can we actually kill this? Well, as long as we respond aggressively, it doesn't look like white can live locally, right? Because if we connect, then we don't have any eyes yet. Black can just drop down happily and be fine. We could try for this. And maybe if black is dumb enough to respond, then we'll find ourselves alive. But black isn't going to do that. What black would wind up doing is probably playing the Atari on that stone. Whoops. Too many. White, get back over there. There we go. If white plays here, black's probably just going to Atari instead. White can run out as far as he wants because he's running to a very strong entrenched black position. So, out of frying pan, into fire. Not good. So it's not looking like we're going to be able to live this way. bit more reduction. Pretty good move though. Pretty good move. There's a lot of Aji here. And now white has given black a very, very annoying position that he has to read. It's like, what are you going to do? Can you afford to double Hane? And allow me to Atari? And allow me to cut? And then potentially allow me to jump away? Or am I going to even be able to just live there by getting forcing moves to uh, force you to go back and live with your group? Have to kill off my cutting stone or something. That might be a problem. So let's say you connect instead. Well, there's still the cut. And there's also a threat to connect. So suddenly, that's going to be Sente. A move like this is going to be Sente. There still cut points. Is that going to be enough to room to live?
black kills off the three stones. That makes reading a lot easier. White gets to Atari, but where is it really going to go? Tries for Aji, as mentioned. Get rid of that. And then we can just connect on up. So those stones are pretty dead. Those stones being dead, white comes out. Threatening to enlarge a very, very, very large area for himself. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Black jumps. And this is essentially one of the interesting things about uh, going for a framework. Because the only reason why white is able to build up all of this is because black was also interested in this Moyo. If he wasn't interested in this, it's unlikely any of this would have ever been built, and that stone might have even had to try to live at some point. Instead, he's interested in building up a large area, white's able to force him to defend it, so he can build up his own large area. I don't usually play for influence nowadays. I try to adopt more of a territorial style. However, when I do find myself playing for influence, I really kind of like developing it in this fashion. It doesn't go well for me half the time, but it's still amusing when it works. So, black jumps out. White immediately takes a very, very large move. He got a very large area for himself. Now white f or black finds himself unable to just respond locally. Because if we keep trying to build up this area, we can see it's going to be a lot smaller than the area that uh, white is starting to develop for himself. So this is not something that we can do. Oops. Ah! You, back on the board. Thank you. So instead, black can't really respond. He has no choice but to attack and reduce. And he does so aggressively with a shoulder hit. Black responds. White ceases to respond. And he goes on the attack. Because he's not going to just let his opponent dictate all of his moves. Um, let's just say this. He's not going to allow something like this to be, uh, be played where he's just connecting a blow. His opponent's getting a lot more uh, strength. Maybe even... Maybe even to go back and cut through. If we give our opponent a lot of strength here, we kind of do risk that shoulder, that uh, small knight being a little bit of a problem for us. So that's another good reason why we're not going to do that. Instead he attacks. Just put him behind enemy lines again. Black is forced to respond. White's happy to extend. And now it's up to Black to find out how we're getting out of here. And he decides to do it aggressively. He's going to try to make that cut regardless. Okay. Making the cut. Aduba duba duba. Ah, uh, messing up my stones everywhere. Uh, need a white stone, thank you. Now, does that ladder work? Well, thankfully, I can read a ladder that goes only four spaces or so. So, yes, I can see that that works. So we're going to extend our stone. Huzzah. No cutty-cutty. Black 
forcing black to extend. Uh, G cut. Getting dangerous here, liberty shortages. White plays moves that we usually don't like to play. He's Atari himself to freedom. But this freedom is what? Sixth, fifth, and... Oops. Sorry, seventh, sixth, and fifth line territory. That's pretty good, right? So we're going to push through. Black says, you in trouble. White says, no, I'm not. Because I can strengthen my stones here in Sente to free these from your evil foul clutches. And so it was that he did. However, our three stones are now in jeopardy. Can get one more forcing move in. Then we have to go back and Atari that. So right away, that's huge, right? I think everyone will agree that that's pretty freaking big. Like I mentioned, seventh line, sixth line, fifth line territory. That's that, that's usually pretty good. And we even have a few stones mixed in there as well. Well, black decides to poke at the only other weak group on the board. If he can kill it, that would definitely smooth things over. White pokes. Stabilizing his eyes. Salvaging his territory on the bottom. White takes the opportunity to break in a little bit. Nice little forcing move there. Same. Nice little forcing move here. Before going back and connecting. Because maintaining access to this is worth more than the one stone. In fact, it's worth so much more that Black decides he needs to try to live back here. So he's going to take his forcing moves. And see if he doesn't have enough to live. What do you think? Is he going to have enough to live back there? Not looking like it, right? So he hits a 3-3. Three, three. A lot of Aji remaining now. Black still poking around. Forcing white to connect. Has a few cut points and extends now. Not bad. Black decides to take advantage of the cut point. Seeing if maybe there's something here for him. This is the part, typically, in an amateur game, where we start crying because we're going to make a mistake and our opponent's going to live. Then again, if he could live, maybe he was alive there all along. What do you think? Is there enough Elaji here for uh, Black to live? Can this actually live? I don't know. I don't know. Arg. So what do you think? Is there enough Aji there? Is there, is there, is there?
forces a capture. Would I show you guys a game that Ghoulie lost? He's developing shape. I don't know. Is this is this gonna live? Is this gonna live? Is it? Is it? Is it? It's not gonna live. How are we gonna kill it? And if you're curious at all to see if you can actually kill this or live with this group, you can always feel free to pause the video and uh, work it out yourself. But first, make certain he can't expand his base anymore. Then, since this is, you know, just for pretty much the entire game, we're going to, uh... throw in a time suji. Because we have to decide how we're going to kill this. We can't do it this way, right? Otherwise, that lives. So we can't just take the stone. So we Atari under the stone. Black turns. Forcing white to back off. Now a potential eye shape here. Black connects. White extends. Killing that dreaded eye shape. So now we can see where what white what black has to work from. He could play here, but that gives us a pretty easy shape to kill, right? So where else can we play? We can play here. But that's looking like a pretty easy shape to kill as well. I mean your eye immediately falls onto the vital point. So it looks like we're not alive down there. So Black decides we're going to go and live here. Except he doesn't try to Atari, he extends down, allowing White to connect. So he better have read this out very, very well. White gets to Atari. Black plays the Atari. And then white drops, or black drops down rather to kill. White extends. Prevent any connection underneath. And thus also ensures that happy days will not be had for black. So he goes and tries to save what he can. White jumps out. I move my stones. Almost forgot black's move. White happily takes. Defends. Connects, but it doesn't work. We can just keep reducing. And we can see that, you know, if he makes, tries to make, we can separate that. If he tries to do that, easy response. Pokes at the group. Kills the eye, because they were me eye. 
plays the Hane. Light reduces. Looks for Aji, nothing there, connecting solidly. Black bends, white connects. No killing of this group will be had. So black goes back and plays the Atari. White's now alive. Keeps him from coming in. White connects and black resigns because he's not going to be able to do anything else. He knows that white is leading and that is not going to change via endgame. The left is really, really large. Quite a few number of points on the right hand side or on this side as well for white. And all of these dead stones aren't helping matters either. So, interesting game here. Black actually went for a very, very large framework. But white got to a point where he was potentially developing more influence than Mr. Framework Man over here. Forcing black to turn around completely from what he was doing and wind up reducing white instead of just having white focus on uh, reducing uh, black. So that makes for an interesting game and dangerous because during my lecture I mentioned uh, one of the dangers of developing uh, a large moya or a framework like this is you're saying that is where I'm trying to get my territory from. And the minute you say that your opponent will think in his head, well if he wants to keep that he's gonna defend that. And by forcing him to defend, I can build up, which is kind of how we see these stones here. We were just forcing the opponent to build up, uh, to keep what he was saying that he wanted for himself. So that's another reason why going for influence can be dangerous. It can be dangerous. I mean, just forget the fact that you can be reduced. Forget the fact that one, one small mistake means uh, maybe your opponent will live in an area where he shouldn't have. I mean, just not even worrying about that. We also have other interesting techniques such as that can be used against us, such as trying to actually develop his own area by forcing us to try to seal off the area that we said that we wanted for ourselves. And those games can be kind of interesting to see. Very interesting indeed. And uh, two games, and the game that went over my lecture, and uh, as well as this one, uh, both kind of reflect that idea that we can just force them to defend, and thus we'll get some territory, as we're seeing here, uh, in exchange. So I hope you guys enjoyed both the uh, game I went over my lecture, as well as the game I went over on this particular board. Um, for those of you who are curious, I'll probably actually do a how to study professional games. Uh, I'll continue that series at some point in the next couple of weeks, I imagine. This is not that. I went over it entirely too quickly. I didn't ask a lot of the questions that you would normally ask yourself if you were going over a uh, pro game of that sort. This was just a review of a game I was going to use in my lectures. But another How to Study Pro Games will, of course, be coming up uh, at some point. You can look forward to that. I uh, can look forward to my lectures every other week in the Enclave, as per usual, on KGS. I hope everybody enjoyed, and I will see you all later.